Firstly, let's look at threats to objectivity. Objectivity is one of the fundamental principles given in the ethical code. We are told that auditors and accountants as a whole should remain objective when making decisions. They should not allow bias and not be influenced by others. However, during an audit, there are many situations where influences could be present, making it difficult to maintain objectivity. These are known as threats to objectivity. We can categorise them into five types of threat. Self-interest, self-review, familiarity, advocacy and intimidation. Firstly, we need to understand what each type of threat is. Then I will take you through some practical examples and how the auditor should manage them. A self-interest threat is where the auditor has a personal interest in the client, which could affect the decisions they make on the audit. This could be a financial interest or any other interest that could affect their judgement, which could affect the whole audit, including the opinion. A self-review threat arises where an audit firm may provide other services other than external audits to a client. Other services, such as tax and accounting preparation, could be completed by an individual who then goes on to work on the audit assignment. The issue is that if they were to audit their own work and discover an error, it would be unlikely that they would admit to it, thereby leaving a potential material misstatement in the financial statements. Familiarity threats are when the auditor is too connected to the client, which affects their reaction to things the client does. They can become too trusting of the client's actions, which can affect decisions made on the audit compared to other less familiar clients. Advocacy threat is where the auditors could be representing them in some way or promoting them. This could be seen as holding their hand and lacking objectivity needed to form an independent opinion. Finally, Intimidation threat is where the client may put pressure on the auditors to threaten them in order to influence the outcome of the audit. If the auditor identifies any of these threats relating to one or more of their clients, they need to put safeguards in place to reduce the threat to an acceptable level.